What are generative design systems? A quick intro for everyone here at its most basic. These um, systems allow us to do rule-based decision-making. So what does that mean? That means that the system has a couple of rules of, of things that it can do, and it uses those rules to make decisions. And those decisions end up being output of some kind. It can be numbers, it can be graphics, uh, it could be sound. Um, as the designers or as the coders of this system, we set the parameters um, by which that system can uh, make those decisions. So we create the rules. We're rule makers, basically. So some examples of where this is used outside of programming, in, um, including examples outside of programming. Um, here is a painter, Saul Lewitt, who has used these techniques to create analog works of art. Brian Eno, the musician, who uses these techniques to create music. Marius Watts uses these techniques to create 3D sculptures. And Casey Rees, the original um, creator of processing, also uses these techniques to generate his artwork, both digital and analog. So if you're an artist and you're interested in this kind of thing, I think it's very compelling because the process, the system itself, is as much a part of your art as the product. So it can shift your relationship to the, both the making of, of your, your end result and the process of doing it. You can um, consider the code that you write as much part of the art as the end result itself. It's also a collaborative relationship between you and the machine. You get to decide how much control it gets and how, um, what it can do with that control. So why might you do this? Um, there are a lot of surprises when you create a system like this. Things that you never would have thought of pop up all the time, um, and it's great for uh, getting to results that you couldn't have otherwise by yourself. You also get more results. We can create hundreds of these crystal shapes in just seconds once the program is built. You also find new directions in the output. You may see something that leads to a whole different way of thinking about the project, something that you wouldn't have gotten to if you were only focused on how to make the, the thing exactly as you en envisioned it. Also efficiency and scale, right? So as I said, we can make hundreds of these new crystals um, in a couple of seconds, export them as SVGs and plop them into something and print them right away. So a good example would be at a convention, if we needed another hundred name tags with unique crystals on each of them, well, we can create that in no time flat. Whereas without this system, we would have to design those one by one manually. And then lastly, this is a practice of its own. So if you're interested in uh, different techniques of creating generative systems, this is a subject of study that you could spend a lot of time on and just get to know um, more as you wish. In that vein, there are two resources I would recommend. One is this book, which has a ton of beautiful examples in it, all with code that, is, uh, that runs in the original processing platform. Uh, and then this one as well, same thing, it's for processing, tons of code examples in it. Both offer a lot of insights and techniques as to how to create these systems and what you can do with them. In this video series, we're going to be very simple in our approach. We're only going to be looking at how the random function can set up rules for making decisions in our system that create the crystals that we were looking at uh, before. So if you're looking for something more complex, this may not be the video for you. I would recommend checking out those books or uh, looking for other tutorials out there. If you do have resources you'd like to recommend to other people who are here as well, then please leave them in the comments below. All right, let's get started.